Hi guys and welcome to the real-time coloring version of this video. If you are looking for the card tutorial, there will be a link in the description but also at the end of the video so you can see how I put the whole card together. Again, this is how I colored this cute little uh, digital stamp. Uh, she is called Carly Cupid. She is by Stamp Anything and I had so much fun. Uh, with a bunch of my favorite stamp companies actually closing their doors, their dig digital stamp companies closing their doors, I uh, have tried to just stay with my clear stamps that I already have and um, yeah, I wasn't feeling inspired. So I have seen uh, Stamping Steve uh, creating a lot of beautiful creations with the Stamp Anything stamps. So I decided that, well, finally gonna jump in. So I headed over to the site. I knew that she had a lot of clear stamps and then I saw the digital stamp place. It's not a lot of stamps, but it does make it possible for you to actually uh, buy a couple of stamps a little bit cheaper than the clear stamps, get them immediately and be able to try them uh, before you decide if you want to buy more of them or, or anything. But yeah, um, I have printed her onto some Hammer Mill 80 pound a color copy cardstock. I really, really like this um, paper. It is similar to the Make It Crafty, but it is more of a yellow undertone than the Make It Crafty that actually have more of an almost a blue undertone. Um, and the colors show up a little bit different on the paper. Um, but I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm really fond of the paper actually. Um, but I'm gonna play around a little bit more before I know if I am really converting. Uh, but I did get a ream of it. So I have 250 sheets to play around with. It is so affordable if you're in the States. Um, this was also a reason why I wanted to pick some up when I was in the States is because um, I recommend the Make It Crafty cardstock a lot and it is a UK based shop that I know have it. Um, so that therefore I wanted to make sure that uh, if you're a US uh, viewer you also have the opportunity to look at or uh, try some papers that I actually use. But yeah. I have chosen to print her out in a grey tone or actually just 20% opacity uh, which was you can do in Word and you can do in Photoshop. I use Photoshop uh, because I use it for like my uh, photo editing and stuff like that for all the thumbnails and all the photos on my blog. So I use it also for my printing my uh, little um, digis. What I liked with these digits uh, is that they are sized to be a stamp size, which means that then you can print it and you can kind of pair them together with other stamps from uh, the Stampin' Any collection and still have the same um, size comparison. Uh, you don't have to kind of measure them and, and work that out. That is all done for you. Really good, really, really good. Especially when they're kind of made for card making. Uh, the reason why I've chosen to do a 20% opacity on the lines is one, I love doing the no line coloring techniques. It is my absolute favorite because I do love that softness of, that you get when you use the no line coloring technique. I also did it because they have very big black pupils, these characters. And I wanted to give give the, make it a little bit softer. So I'm not gonna use like black for the black pupils. Instead, I'm gonna use it to make, give her blue eyes in a very manga-ish way. I really like it. Really like doing it that way. I had a plan, I realize now when I'm talking to you, I did have a plan to use a white gel pen and draw little hearts in her eyes, and I didn't. I don't know if I need to, though. Uh, but I, I, I did realize now that I forgot that yesterday. I was thinking about it when I colored her eyes, but I wasn't thinking about it um, when I had colored um, her completely. 
But yeah, let's go into the coloring part of, of it. Uh, this is my go-to skin color. You know, I have a go-to skin, skin color and I think we all do. This is a skin color uh, that is very, very close to my own. Um, because it's very close to my own, it's something I see on a daily basis, in the mirror, when I walk by a window. Um, which means that I kind of know where the lights hits and what kind of colors there are there and stuff like that. Uh, I do try to mix it up and do other skin colors now and then, um, but I mostly just jump in with my favorite ones. And also because I'm pr trying out a new paper, um, and in, which means that I have to kind of counter my coloring a little bit. Uh, the ink doesn't work 100% the same way that it does on the other papers. So I have to kind of figure out how do I color this image. Um, so I'm, then I'm choosing my favorite, my favorite uh, kind of color combination, uh, which is E04 for the absolute darkest um, little uh, creases. Uh, E11 to kind of blend that out, E21, E00 and E50 to kind of build it up uh, outwards. I'm using the E50 because 50 has a yellow undertone which works really really good for skin. Uh, Caucasian skin have a bluish tone in their shadow and you will see that I have a little bit of a yellowish tone in the highlights and there's why I work that way. I'm going in with two layers because I didn't feel I got the coverage that I wanted with the first layer. And I do that quite often actually. Um, then I'm decided to go in and do her cheeks. I'm using R32. It's a really, really potent pink, uh, but I'm kind of pushing it out from the shadows uh, from her cheek. And then I'm going to blend it out with the R31. 30, which is actually a pretty light pink. They are really hard to blend on bigger pieces, but on smaller pieces like cheeks and stuff, they're really, really easy to blend. Um, so I'm just blending, carefully blending that out uh, towards the middle to give her really big pink cheeks. I really like that look. Um, a character looks a little bit more energized and happy when you see more of the red tones. I also add some pink onto the tips of her fingers and on the tip of her nose because that is uh, where you have a lot of what is called subsurface scattering, which in this case is pink because it's skin we're talking about. I'm doing some extra pieces on her mouth, kind of just um, making that thong a little bit more like a thong. How do you pronounce thong? Tongue? Tongue, that's probably the word, tongue. Yeah, but um, to kind of make it more look more like a tongue, I also used the deepest shadow as the kind of depth of the mouth, because when you open your mouth, the cheeks will uh, are so thin that you will get more, get a little bit of light in where your cheeks, through your cheeks. So um, it will not be completely black. It will have kind of a reddish tone. Then I'm going in, starting shadowing her eyes, realizing, well, I need to shape the eye a little bit more. And I give her that one little pink corner that we have in our eyes. And then I continue shading with a little bit of a lighter blue. I'm using the B60s. that are like purplish, grayish tones, which are really good to kind of shape the eye eyeball with. I'm putting the darkest just underneath the eyelid and then I'm using the lighter one to kind of ro round the eye a little bit. Uh, these, th the eyes are going to be a little bit more manga-ish, as I said previously. So I start by using my lightest color to kind of just fill in the eye because I do have that gray underneath. Uh, it's going to be a little bit darker than the marker that I've chosen. Then I'm going to go in with the B39 to kind of just shape the first part of the pupil, making kind of a round line, but um, kind of making the little pizza 
slice out of it and it doesn't go all the way out to the line so it's almost like you put a a circle with the pizza yeah kind of stacked on each other and then I uh, just blend the last color I did the B37 and then I go in and blend with the B23 to get um, a little bit of a lighter a little bit of a more blended eye this was where I'm like oh yeah I'm not gonna forget to make like little white gel pen hearts but yeah I totally forgot I was listening to music and just kind of colored away um, that is usually how I do it I turn on some music because I have a very hard time coloring and watching something because the coloring takes a lot of my um, I just remember the Swedish word right now I'm sorry but um, I kind of con concentration that was the word it takes a lot of my concentration just the to do the coloring so uh, I usually listen to either to music or to a podcast and uh, yesterday it was some really pumping up music because I started making this card at eight o'clock in the evening um, that was just crazy uh, <laughs> I usually don't craft that late at night. I try to uh, do it on Saturdays or Sundays or if I have an early day from work I go home and craft uh, but usually I don't craft at night but I have one of those days when I've just been resting most of the day and not getting anything done and then at, at 8 I'm like yeah I am going to make a card and I am going to buy these stamps finally and I'm going to print them and we're going to have so much fun and I had so much fun but I was a little bit th tired so I put some really energetic music on um, kind of old school 19s 2000s kind of uh, pop a little bit of Beyonce a little bit of everything it was really really nice uh, some kind of mix um, on um, YouTube no, yeah, on YouTube. I have YouTube music now, so I swear, listen to that. For the eyes, I actually added some eyebrows to her face. I also used a darker brown for her eyelashes. They ended up being a little bit too dark to begin with. I was considering, I was a little bit, oh no, 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 did I, did I do wrong? Did I add too much darkness? But I'm going to counteract that with the quiver and the bow later, um, kind of at the end of the coloring. So it's still going to be balanced. I'm one of those, when I do my creations, I try not to um, add one color just at one place. I try to make sure that I get a balance. And if that balance is in the card or in the pattern paper, um, but I try not to use uh, colors that are not if I have busy pattern papers as I have for the card that I made for this and I made this for um, then I try not to use colors that aren't in the pattern paper there is a um, difference grays and browns I kind of use a little bit whenever however uh, the e 40s is one of the few browns that you don't really need to think about what kind of tone you have in your papers um, but if you want to use like the e50s or the e20s you do want to look that they match because they have the e50s have more of a yellow tone and the e 20s for example have a lot of much redder tone and therefore you want to have that balance of red you want to have the amount of red redness in the reds or in in the pattern paper so they match uh, so e40s are my go-to and i think it is because they match basically anything i don't really have to worry about it in this case i really the color scheme the thought in the color scheme was that i wanted it to be simple uh simple coloring so that because i have so much busyness going on in the pattern paper she would actually stand out from the simpleness alone just pure just being that light simple thing it makes the card less busy if I have an image where I use a lot of colors 
then I would either use a very, very, very timid pattern paper or I would use a simple color wash or just a little bit of blending or spot blending is actually one of my favorite when I have busy images where I use um, I use a stencil and then I just blend from the inside out in just spot behind the character and that's it white card with that little spot and then I try to bring some of the color one or two of the colors from the character into the sentiment um, and also the background should kind of coordinate a little bit so there should be a matching with one of the colors in the character but yeah in this case it's a very busy background so then I just have to make her a little bit more simple so I chose to go with the E44 here. I'm um, hair here. Sorry, <laughs> it's actually uh, a little bit of a later later day today. Also, I don't know why. Uh, well, Christopher got home after I edited the video, so I needed to eat. So it's a little bit of a later evening. So if I kind of mispronounce things, that's that's how it is. How how it is. I'm gonna have a long day tomorrow too, and I want to get this up for you before valentine's i hate being this late i'm trying to be a, a week ahead about a week ahead with my creations but this week it just didn't work out that way but yeah for the rest of the hair i'm using e43 e42 e41 so she gets this kind of ash light brown um it's not super blonde but it's kind of blonde a tip is if you want it to be like platinum blonde then you would dump all the colors up a step so don't have the E44 instead have the E40 as the top color so that's how I how I would do it anyhow uh, also if you wanted to be even more platinum blonde you can actually do that through using the E43 42 no the 42 41 40 and then leaving white and make it kind of a stranded look so you kind of do a lot of thin thin flicks uh, in the hair towards the highlight which is white that will give you a really good platinum blonde i love my e40s they're very versatile <laughs> But yeah, so here I just use um, kind of the mid-tones of them. I really, really like how the E44 shows up on this paper. Uh, all of the 40s actually show up a little bit lighter than they show up on the Make It Crafty cardstock. Um, again, another reason why you should do your coloring swatches on the same paper as you are coloring because it will give a, it's, it will be a lot different. Um, a few other differences um, between the papers is that this has a little slight a little bit more texture to the paper to the surface. It's nothing that is visible in any shape or form, but if you put the make it crafty next to this and you uh, kind of carefully just brush over with your fingertips you will feel that you have a little bit more um, texture a little bit more roughness in the hammer mill um, and because of that it also absorbs a little bit more color and the color will move a little bit differently on the paper uh, if you take hammer mill and say a nina the nina solar white um, crested cardstock that one is even more textured and have even more of the um the absorbent it's, it's a little bit more porous so it will absorb a little bit more color and uh red you can see that very very clearly on red because red have a tendency to bleed outside the lines if you have thin lines on your stamped image on nina Crested. you can contract that and I did that for a long time uh, you color not by the line but kind of cl just close to the line and let the the bleed move the ink all the way out that was how I used to do it when I used Nina uh, but yeah so different papers have different textures probably gonna make a video about 
uh, different papers show you kind of comparisons and stuff. But that video takes a little bit more than just doing some coloring. I have to do more planning and I have a little bit much on my plate right now. <laughs> Um, and if you wondering what's happening in my private life, I do have a vlogging channel. It should be linked in the description down below. It's called The Real Life of Me. Um, I just uploaded a quite of a big video there um, about kind of health issues that I'm struggling with. Um, newer ones that we figured out late December. So yeah, if you're interested. Otherwise, let's get on with the coloring. Uh, but yeah, so when I do hair, um, a few things I think about. One is I try to first add in the shadows. I use the darkest color more, m more uh, behind her, behind her neck, behind just behind her head. Um, I try to use it less on top of her head or hair that is closest to the viewer. Um, and then I maybe not even use the lighter tone on the hair at the back of the neck and kind of behind her. Um, just go in with the darker colors. This will give it a depth because it will look like that hair is a little bit further away than the hair you have like up in front. And I don't know, it's, it gives a more, more character to the character, sort of. But yeah, next step is actually something fun. This is one of my biggest tip is when you are working with an image that has a lot of details uh, and you really don't want to bring out your whole stock of, of colors, you can actually just shade everything in a gray tone. This is where I decided I'm going to shade everything in a gray tone. But partly was because I started doing the shadowing on the skirt and then I realized when I've done a little bit of it, it was like, oh yeah, I was supposed to color that red. But the thing is, you actually can save some time with this because then you just do all the shading in gray and then you just use one color to color over it. You, um, I am going to show you, um, there is actually a piece of this image later on that is going to show the dif difference between doing the shadowing first and doing the shadowing afterwards. I do recommend doing the shadowing first. And the reason for that is that because the Copics are transparent, they kind of work like a glaze. So they add the color tone of the color that you added the latest kind of up front, most towards you, which means that any kind of gray tones will be pushed back. It isn't as perfect as using like three different red markers, but it does the job. And that is actually something you can use in the beginning when you are kind of collecting your markers and, and doing is just use um, uh, the buy some grays. Grays are always good to have. Uh, there are four different grays. You can buy every other marker and then you should buy one gray every other marker. If you are just buying one gray, you want to know if you're going to have a cold gray or a warm gray or if you just want to land in the middle. I mostly use my uh, neutrals or toner grays. Those are my favorite. I like the tone in them and they're usually really good to do this kind of uh, little collection or uh, kind of shadowing thing. Uh, but if you are working a lot with a lot of very cool colors then maybe cool gray is good or if you work a lot with warm colors then warm is a good. Uh, but when you're working with the cold or the warm colors you need to kind of balance that with the colors. So if you have a lot of warm colors in your image and then have a cool colored um, kind of gray like a shirt or something where you use it to kind of tone tone white with gray then that will stand out because the image won't be unison. That's another thing. Staying in one either cool side or a warm side really will help balancing out the image. 
Um, and also that also can bring things together if you uh, for example color use one shadow color for the whole image and then just go in with one marker that have another color on top that can help you to get a more unison image because then you will have that gray to tone all the other colors to be a little bit more equal sort of speaking but yeah I like mixing and matching. I have all the pens because I collect them, them over years and I love them. So I try to use them, but I do have my favorite ones. Toner grays, neutral grays and the E40s. They must be my absolute favorite ones. I can use them all the time. This is where I realized that I wanted more dimension to my arrows or the little feathery things on the arrows. And this is where I went in with the gray afterwards. And you are going to see, even though I'm using the exact same grays, the T4 and the T2, you'll see that that gray lays on top of the red and it looks much more gray than the white that I cut first colored gray or the other red parts. So I do recommend using the, the grays at the top. And then I had the bow and I was thinking and thinking and thinking, how am I going to color this? Well, I'm going to keep the neutral. I just want that little pop of red and that those blue eyes that actually match the blue in the pattern paper. And that's it. So I decided, well, I'm going to go in with the E40s and I got the E44 because I don't want to go too dark because then they would really stand out. But the E44, uh, first of all, I covered it full, so I didn't have any kind of dimension, but also it was a little bit too light, so it kind of got mixed into with the hair. So I took the E47 and I kind of just went in and did a little bit of sh shading. And this ties in the E47 that is on the eyelashes, and now it looks much more unison just by getting that little bit of a darker spot in a couple of other spots in the image and then balance it out and also that bla uh, dark brown bow made her hair fall back even more i kind of like it kind of like it i finish it off by just drawing that little line you could use a fine liner if that would be easier for you but I kind of like just using the Copics straight off. But yeah, that is all the coloring for today. Uh, I hope you liked my video. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just a comment down below. And down below you find all of the details, all the Copic markers and everything. Thank you again for watching. And I hope to see you later. Bye.